Today, we are going to be talking about uh, collecting assignments and delivering tests in Blackboard. All right, I'm Michael Strunk. I'm an instructional support specialist. Uh, I'm going to be walking through assignments and tests today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Cynthia and Stephanie are both joining us in the, the text, so they will be there if we have extra questions. Uh, do not forget our Keep Teaching website. This has lots of good resources, uh, and it's also where you can go to set up an appointment with one of our staff should you need it. All right, um, we are having additional workshops all week, um, so please check our site for those. And if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation, either online or via phone, uh, please go to go.niu.edu slash factev consultations. All right, so today, um, and we're going to try to get through all of this in about half an hour or so, so that uh, we leave plenty of time for your questions at the end. Um, but we're going to be starting an ultra course view. Uh, we're going to show you how to create an assignment or test. I'm only going to do uh, creating a test because creating an assignment is pretty much the same. Uh, we'll uh, talk about the grading workflow then in ultra, and then we'll jump into original because that is a little more uh, involved when you want to create assignments and tests, and the two are just a little bit different. Uh, and then hopefully we'll have a little uh, time at the end to talk about some strategies maybe to prevent cheating and address your questions. All right, so first thing we're going to do is, um, well, here, let me, I'm just going to demonstrate this, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, so here we have, um, this is our uh, courses page. Uh, I'm going to start, as I said, with the course view. So I'm just going to go ahead and on my courses page, I'm going to click my ultra course to open it. All right, uh, and as I said, once you, you've got this open, uh, creating a test, is very easy creating assignment it works pretty much the same way so all we're going to do is we're going to come over here into our content area uh, and we are going to hover our cursor to pull up a plus icon click it and we will select create this now will um, open up our create panel uh, this time you can see if we scroll down about halfway, we have an option to create a test or assignment. Uh, this time I'm going to create a test. So I just click on that to create the test and then I the uh, test canvas. You do have to uh, name your test. So I'm gonna say test module three for starters. Uh, and once you've named it, then uh, similar to when we uh, created the test itself. Um, all you have to do is come down into the canvas area, find the plus icon, and click on it. And now this brings up the um, different types of questions you can add. Um, for um, all of these question types, anything that uh, say is multiple choice, true, false, matching, things like that, um, Blackboard will actually grade them for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But something like, say, an essay question, uh, that is then something that you will have to go in and grade. Um, you can add text to uh, the test, like if you for perhaps wanted to put in some extra directions. Um, but as I said, it's really easy to add a question. I'm just going to start by uh, adding a true-false question. Okay, uh, and you can see it's very simple. Uh, the points are up in the upper right. Um, that can be adjusted simply by clicking on it. I'm just gonna leave it where it is for now. Um, <clears throat> and then you come down here and you simply type in your question, which is going to be, um, is the how about this? Sorry, sun is hot. Okay. And then I've 
decided that's true, so I'm going to designate my answer, and then I will click Save. Okay, now I've got my first question in my test. Very simple. If I want to add another question, I'm going to click on the plus icon again and simply add another question. Um, you will notice that there is a reuse question um, selection down here. That is so that if you have um, created tests before, you can come in and pull questions from previous tests um, to make it a little easier for you. Okay, once you have constructed your test and you have all the questions in it, then you can um, select your due date, um, how you're going to grade it, how many attempts you allow, and all that stuff in the test settings panel. Uh, in assignment, it works the same way. Uh, the only difference is it will say assignment settings instead of test settings. Um, so you can either um, click on one of these items to get in here, or if you um, also click on the gear icon, this will open the same panel. Now from here, you can set your due date. Um, you can decide if you want to randomize some questions, which is one of our strategies for hopefully discouraging cheating. Um, and you can come down here and you can um, set all of the parameters of your test. We do have some additional tools down here um, that you can add. Um, again, these are helpful for cheating prevention, like adding a time limit. Um, this is also where you'll add a grading rubric if you'd like to use it. Um, that is, of course, up to you. Or enable safe assign. Uh, one quick word on safe assign. It is very helpful um, for detecting plagiarism, but it is not foolproof. Um, so just be aware of that. OK, once you have um, created your test and assigned all of your um, test settings to your liking, all you have to do is click Save. And should be good. Oh, one thing too. Um, in Ultra, the default is always hidden. So you're going to need to make sure that if you want this uh, available to students, you're going to need to make it visible. And once you've done that, and you can see now when I come back out to my uh, course area, I've got this test here for module three is already loaded where I want it. So uh, once you have your test in there and then students um, are either taking the test or completing an assignment um, to find out um, What's been done, all you'll have to do if you're in the ultra view um, is you can see that from out front. If you come out to the um, base navigation and click on the grades tab, this shows you a list of all of your courses that have work in them um, and student submissions. So um, all you have to do then is then click on whichever one of these items you would like to uh, start grading. One thing Ultra is that um, after you have graded something, it waits for you to actually post the grades. Uh, this is so that you can sort of hold off posting grades and giving feedback until everyone has uh, completed the test or the due date has passed. Um, but again, that is kind of up to you. All right, so that was real quick on um, the Ultra course view. Now we're going to move to the original course view. All right, so inside our original course, um, and most of you, if you're starting, you have these um, default um, areas up at the top. I would go ahead and um, just put any assessments and, or rather assignments and tests, go ahead and place them in the assessments area. That'll uh, make it easier for you and easy for students to find. Um, and anyway, to create an assignment, we're going to start first by entering this assessments area. And then um, to create an assignment from here, I am going to come up at the top uh, and I'm going to roll over assessments here and click assignment because I want to create a new assignment. Um, and now I'm, and many of you are probably familiar with this, but um, now I'm in the uh, create assignment area. I can give it a name. I'm going to call it 
assignment, COVID. And I can just scroll down if I want to add files, I will add them in the assignment file area. Um, I can create a due date. I can add the points possible. Notice there's an asterisk here, so that is required. Um, and then a few more things um, down here. It will default to uh, individual submission, but if you would like to create group assignments, uh, that is gonna be done here under the submission details. You can see you're just gonna um, click on that group submission button. Um, and this is also in original where you're gonna enable the safe assign. So you would check these boxes to enable safe assign. Um, one thing here is you can um, choose the number of attempts. Um, depending on the stakes of your assignment, um, it is usually a good idea to allow multiple attempts. Uh, the problem with the single attempt is that if uh, something happens to a student, um, for instance, they lose their internet connection or get timed out, something like that, um, having a single attempt then means that they won't be able to get back in to uh, complete the assignment unless you go in and clear their initial attempt. So um, unless it's some sort of uh, exam where you want people only using it, only doing it once, I would suggest allowing multiple attempts. Um, if you scroll down a little further, um, you can click on this display of grades. Um, the default is score, but you can choose letter or percentage if you'd like. And this is where, if you want, you can uh, unclick this and make an assignment not be part of your grading center calculations. Um, <clears throat> finally, don't forget about availability. Um, unlike Ultra, in original, assignments are automatically available, but you can adjust the date um, by selecting it down here. Once you've done all that, you're going to click Submit. And since um, what happens in uh, original is that if you have some assignments, it will automatically um, put your new assignment at the bottom. So if you scroll down here, you can see that this new assignment I've just created is right here. All right, now if we want to create a test that's a little bit different, but it starts the same, we're in our assessments area, but this time we're going to click test, to collect a test, and this brings us to the uh, test creation canvas. Um, You'll notice if, if you have created tests previously in your course, you may see them here listed. Um, this is new for me, so I don't have anything, but if you need to create a new test, all you're gonna do is click the Create button. Uh, we're gonna name our new test. So I'm gonna just call this New Test 5. And you would add a description and of course the instructions. And when you have that, you're gonna click Submit, and that will take us now here. That brings us into the test canvas. Um, this is somewhat similar to Ultra in that you're going to come up here uh, where it says Create Question, and you can see there are a bunch of different questions here you can choose. Uh, again, I'm gonna click True False. And I'm gonna call this question R just for the heck of it. Um, is it? Sunny today. And my answer is true. Um, one nice feature in original here is that you can add different feedback to students. So if they get the response correct, you can say, hey, way to go. If they get the response incorrect, this is a place where you can say, hey, you know, you may need to go back and review chapter three or something like that. Um, but once you've got all that filled in and you're ready to go, you're going to click Submit. And again, similar to what we had in uh, Ultra, you can come in here and add more questions simply by um, scrolling over and clicking on the plus icon. Once you've got your test constructed, you're going to click OK. Now, uh, unlike the original, um, you have to deploy your test. So um, this is where, and if you've if you've already got a test created and it shows up in your list, you can just kind of skip to this step.
Um, but to deploy a test, it's pretty easy. You just need to highlight it and then click Submit. OK, this is going to give us test options again. We've submitted it. And you'll see again, this is going to bring this down to the bottom. Um, if you need to move things up, uh, simply come over here, grab this arrow, and drag it up. OK, uh, now. To get into the grading workflow in original, um, what you're going to want to do um, is, A, you can do it, as I showed you earlier, from the base navigation page by going into your course. Or you can do it from inside your course here, too, by um, expanding the selections under Grade Center and clicking on Needs Grading. This will show you everything in your class that needs grading. Um, I don't have anything in this class right now, so that's a terrible example. Um, but that is a way to get into the grading workflow. This, again, can also be done from uh, the Grades tab. Now here, um, if I, um, and you can see this is kind of nice because it shows all of your courses in one spot. And uh, my Etrish 3 shell, I don't have anything to grade right now. All right, I felt like I zoomed through that at about a million miles an hour. Um, so I want to pause for a second um, to give people a chance to A, catch your breath, myself included, um, and also uh, ask any questions. Um, Michael, so I have yes. a few questions from faculty here. Uh, I think it's better for, for us to address it now because we're getting the same sure. questions anyways. Uh, so they're asking if there's a way for them, if they already have a, 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 the questions in the Word document, to upload it in, in, in the test. So is there a way to do um, that? Yeah, that, that can be a little complicated. The, the best thing you can, probably the easiest thing to do is to um, have two windows open and um, simply cut and paste from your Word document into the test canvas. Um, you can upload test questions by putting them in an Excel document. But that is kind of complicated, and I really wouldn't uh, recommend tackling that unless you have uh, some time to devote to it. Um, I do think that um, you know, if you have a Word document and have all your uh, questions written out at least, that'll save you some time by cutting and pasting. Yeah, there's some. Question. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, there's some instruction out there. I think I know Helena what I, what you're referring to that. A .txt document would take it, but I'm guessing it's not true. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have tried it a few times myself, and it's it's kind of a frustrating process. Um, I I have made it work at times, and also struggled with it at times. So just I'm you know trying to keep things simple, cutting and pasting. I know will work. Okay, and then uh, there's another question about oh yeah, so if they develop um, a core uh, like a, 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 a diff, a, the same test, they want to deploy it in a different um, section. How do they do it? Okay, uh, what you can do in that instance is um, copy your test into uh, your new course. Um, so. You would do that in, let's see here. In original, I believe uh, what you're going to come and do is uh, you will come down to the, where is it, the packages and utilities. Um, yeah, you're going to do probably, I think probably the easiest way is to do a course copy. Um, and then when you're here in this, um, only select the test surveys and pools to move over. That will move your tests into your new um, course. And then in Ultra, I believe it's a little simpler, actually. Um, you should be able to. Let me see if I can. All right. No, this 
is not correct. I think that would be for the, I think you want to go to reuse questions. And if you have, yeah, so um, it actually is, this is tied to all of my um, other courses. So this is kind of where I've got just a depository of some questions. So you can copy them from here. Um, so, I see somebody is asking uh -huh. about a lockdown browser yep, yep. Um, for tests. We are at at the time at this time we are not recommending that because um, that is something that a student would have to um, download and use on their machine. Um, our students may not have uh, the ability to do that, um, so uh, we're just going to sort of have to admit that you know these students are now in an uncontrolled environment um, when they're taking these tests so some things you can do are say randomized questions you might want to um, add a time limit so that they are um, forced to sort of um, you know not or they won't have time to go out and check other sources you could just make an open book test uh, and then make the questions a little harder um, a little more higher order thinking uh, and then um, my, sorry michael um, yeah, go ahead. are you are you done with that question because i have a few more um like bef other questions here that might okay. apply to everyone else so it's about assignment todd asked about how the students upload their assignments and is there oh, okay. a file a size limit and type limit to the assignments that students can submit um yeah, there is there is a practical um, size limit. Although, if students are uploading text files and stuff, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you're going to have students uploading videos, then you um, probably will have um, issues that way. And so we may want to um, set that up a little differently. You might want to use one of the um, other tools available for video. Um, because that'll keep the, the sizes down and make it work a little better. Is there, I see. Yeah, there's f a few more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, so, yeah, good. so there's uh, another question from the, uh, Theresa that could you demonstrate how a multiple choice question would work? I'm not entirely sure if it's like how the students maybe see it, or I'm not entirely sure um, about that question. Yeah, here, what I'm going to do. Hold on, let me just, um, first off, I'm gonna jump into, in this ultra, I'm gonna jump into student uh, preview mode. Okay, and now this is, this is what I'm seeing as a student. Um, and so when I go to say, take the test, uh, all I do is I click on this. Um, it, initially shows me some of the parameters. Um, I click view assessment down here, and this brings me into the test. Okay, if, um, and then all I have to do is click on the answer I want and submit. Um, and you can see there's a, like in assignments, um, students can add stuff uh, directly from this view. And when they're finished, they simply click Submit. And then, as you can see, in this case, because it's a true-false, um, the machine grades it. Since I got it right, I got 10 out of 10. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier is anytime you create a, an assignment or a test in Ultra or Original, you will uh, it automatically creates a column in the grade center that then those scores are then thrown into. Um, so anytime you grade, those grades are automatically entered into the grade center. Okay, next question. <laughs> so sure. can you set a time limit on a quiz for let's say 15 minutes once it's started? Yes, um, and what happens is um, students can enter the quiz at say different times depending on how long your availability is set for um, but once they enter the quiz the timer starts and uh, it doesn't matter if they 
um, leave or not, the timer just runs until it's over. So um, there are a couple of things you can do. You can either elect to um, have the test or assignment automatically submitted when the timer expires, or um, you can let them just finish. Um, and then what will happen when you go into grade, it will tell you, hey, this student exceeded the time limit, and then you can uh, impose whatever uh, penalty you you had decided on and, and shared with the students. Is that helpful? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so there's another question from Teresa. So she, I guess because we showed the, the true or false um, option, mm -hmm. And she's asking what does a multiple choice look like. But basically, the reason it's the same kind of thing. It, it's just it, you have it is to, pretty yeah. much going to be the same. Yeah. Um, here, I'll pop in and show you one real quick. Oh, I wanted to exit. Whoops. OK, there we go. So edit. OK, and this time, I add a question. Uh, you said multiple choice, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. um, so all you have to do then is this time, um, sorry, my, um, my typing is not good. But those of you who are old like me will recognize this. OK, so all you have to do then, you're going to designate your um, correct answer by clicking it. Um, you can choose more than one. Um, and you can also uh, rearrange your order if you'd like. You can add uh, additional choices by clicking Add Choice down here or remove them by clicking the trash can. Um, once you're done, you click Save. It's going to look uh, the same for students, although you can, um, as I said, one of your choices, um, I believe, in your settings is to randomize answers. Um, so if you do that, uh, then every time a student clicks on this question, they're all going to get a different order of the responses. So that's another way to sort of um, discourage dishonesty. Okay, so the next question is how accurate is Blackboard? If a student misspells a word, how does it grade it? Well, um, if it, it will, um, I mean, anytime you have an essay type of question, it will um, ask you to grade it. So the that's sort of up to you at that point. Um, when you create text responses, I believe that you can type in different um, types of responses so that it can a student can match it in more than one way. Um, as I said, I would try to keep things very simple so I wouldn't um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily uh, try to make students match an exact phrase. I mean, you can um, think about that, and you know, you can you can construct a multiple choice question probably that will get the job done. Okay. Um, the other question is: Can you upload tests in advance where students can't see them? Yeah, you can. Uh, you just keep it um, keep the visibility turned off. So like, for example, this test that I just created, um, what I can do is just click hidden from students. And now um, this is in here. It's in your course, but it is hidden. Students can't see it. Um, if I jump into student preview right now, and you'll see that the uh, the test is not showing up for students. Um, <clears throat> and that's so that you can, in fact, um, get your tests ready uh, and have them ready to go so you don't have to like throw them in at the last second. 
And then kind of a, a kind of follow-up question for that is, if you already have columns in your grade center for quizzes, will there be another one added if you create a new quiz? Um, yeah, anytime, if you create a new quiz, um, it will create a new column for you. Uh, if you, I, I wonder if you're talking about maybe a calculated column um, that say takes all of the quiz scores and totals them. Um, in that case, as long as you've got your calculation set up correctly and then you categorize your quiz correctly, it will automatically add to that calculated column. Okay, and then um, so Mary Ann said no current, she doesn't have uh, any column set up. So Mary said so, you, don't, you don't have a quiz so you, yet. Yeah, I'm so you created the columns right. and, but you haven't mm -hmm. created the quiz, is that correct? Because if, if you've done that, um, I would encourage you um, to hide those columns. Um, and just when you create your quiz, uh, it will automatically create the column for you. And everything works so that the scores automatically go there. Um, I've seen in the past where um, if you get multiple columns, sometimes that can get confusing. And um, what can happen is, um, scores will be going to the column, to an incorrect column, and then don't get um, pulled into the grade total. Um, if you, yeah, if, if you've just set up the columns and don't have the quizzes made, then you, you can probably just get rid of those columns. Um, and when you make your test, it will create another column for you. I, I would suggest that. I think that'll probably be the easiest for you. Um, yeah, you can upload uh, pictures um, and all kinds of stuff through the text editor. Um, let me see if I can hop back in there again. So if I say, yeah, if I go to add text, if you'll notice um, one of my options here um, is to insert some local files. Um, there's also this guy here, which allows you to insert a video from the web. And this guy here allows you to insert a link. So Michael, I don't know if you want to show them if you want to insert um, the, the mathematical equations and you know any functions. Oh yeah, thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. um, in the text editor, there is a um, math function, which if you click on this f sub x here, um, it will bring you to the insert math formula. And here you have quite a bit of stuff. Um, I am not a mathematician, so this is literally very confusing to me. But um, this is where you would go then to create a formula. Um, you can also um, you know, plug in the answers, and this, again, will grade it for you. Is that helpful? I think, yep. I think that's, yeah, that's the, that's, that's what we need. <laughs> and I just All want right, to address good, good. Um, Prantika's uh, question about uploading videos in Blackboard. I think it's uh, f f uh, because we're concentrating on the assessments in this session. We have mm -hmm. uh, a different session for uploading, uh, working with videos in Blackboard. So you might want to check our Keep Teaching website for, for the works, uh, workshop listing for that. So we have a, a couple of those in there. So you might want to go ahead and check those out for, for the videos. Excellent. All right, do we have more questions? We have plenty of time. We can get into some more detail. Like, I know I went through it very quickly, so that's a lot to digest in a short amount of time. 
you know, we are here to help you. So please, please reach out to us um, in the event that you need help. Um, we will do our best to get back to you just as soon as we can. Um, and don't forget, where is my slide here? Yes. Uh, don't forget, um, we do have these additional workshops. If you need uh, a more personalized consultation, please um, hit us up at go.niu.edu slash factev consultations.